what did you say to the guys at three quarter time? Great. Oh, look, I just, it was an inter interesting part of the game that third quarter because I felt we we had control of the game and all the numbers would suggest that, but you know, they just kept getting goals, you know, and kicking straight and opportunities through sort of, you know, varying ways to score, but we, we just had to hang in there. And um, I felt that if you look at the trend of the game that we tended to run better within the quarters and um, I just know we've done a lot of work. You know, we're um, credit to Jared Wade, our fitness head of high performance and our fitness team has done an enormous amount of work. So I knew we had the run in our legs. Um, yeah, we just had to get to work. We see so often in those situations, you know, teams dominate inside fifties, scoring chances, but when they don't, you know, for the large part, when they don't take the chances they often the block. But how pleasing was it for you to see you guys just keep coming, 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 and then the down walls break? Yeah, well, we, we created that pattern of behaviour last year, but then you've got to revisit it and do it again. Like we. So they had great belief coming into it. I'm driving here going, oh, I'm just really excited for what could be. Um, knowing that we've done the work and you, you can only get belief through evidence and the evidence was that we've had an enormous pre-season. And um, yeah, we, in the two practice games, just to give you some context, two practice games, we were training like right through. We didn't even taper for any of the parts of the games. So a bit of a concern there, but I just trust that Jared Wade knows what he's doing. But I just knew that we had a lot of run in our legs and we just had to try to get that game going. There's sort of two headlines out of this. One is the, the running power and the league speed, which you just talked about. The other one's the scoring. I mean, that's your high score, Collingwood's high score for five years. Right. Um, are they, have they been, like, the two main focus areas over the off-season? Yeah, well, again, you look at growth and progression, and it's only around one. There's a, it's hardly a pattern at the moment. But, um, yeah, you come watch us train, you'll see the, mo the ball's moving more efficient, if you like, and players know the system a bit better. Um, yeah, so it equated the scoring tonight. I think down in uh, Tassie, we played Hawthorne. And we had a high scoring game too. The other part of it is we we leaked 16 goals, so you know you can't have it all your own way. But I think our offensive um, system is in good shape. So is that that was going to be my next question? Is that the caveat on this that it's round one and we do see round one throw up some bizarre results? Yeah. Yeah, let's give it a few weeks and see how we go. <laughs> How's Jeremy? Oh, he's in hospital, unfortunately. I'm, uh, he's got a fracture in his... I'm not going to try to explain what it is, but, um, yeah, we'll give some context to that. He's going to have a scan and, uh, excuse me, and a pen, potentially an operation tomorrow, so... Is it his forearm? Yeah, in there somewhere, yeah. How serious does it feel? I mean, they didn't show replays. It, it looked really gruesome. All the players went over. Yeah. looked gruesome. Well, he's such an important player. Like he's, he's a vice captain. We all love him. Like, so when you see one of the guys go down, the one of the real good guys, you go, oh, well, that's going to be a cost somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how long he's going to be out. But the players' reaction to that, we, we, we're a connected group, and yeah, it's pleasing to see it on the field. Billy Frampton was an emergency tonight. Does he come in the front the next week? Back That's the obvious replacement, yeah. He's, um, he was a bit unlucky to miss out, Bill. He's done, had a great pre-season. Um, yeah, I sat him on my couch and said, look, we're going to trust Murphy in um, to play that role because he plays their system slightly better at the moment. But so he should. He's been doing it for a bit longer. So, But, um, yeah, Bill's the obvious replacement. Well, first time we've seen Bobby Hill in the black and white, but first time we've seen him since he's recovered from cancer. Can you talk us through his impact on the club across his first six months? Yeah, I said pre-game, I just love Bobby's smile. Like he walks into our place and he lights us up. Um, it's good to see our players happy, you know, whether it's Bobby or whoever in our environment smiling. And, you know, he's, uh, he looks like a real hungry young, young man looking to make his mark because you know, he's only in the early stages of his career. Um, I, I knew he was going to light some stuff up at some stage, so he almost took mark of the year because um, he does it at training. So just before the game, I said, mate, just be Bobby, Bobby at training because it's pretty exciting what he can do. Can I ask you about the Dacos family? We're quite emotional in there tonight. Um, the boys have lost their grandfather. Pete's lost yeah. his dad. Um, the maturity of those two guys who've been like sitting at their grandfather's bedside during the week to play the games they did tonight, they're, they're remarkable young players. Yeah, yeah, it makes me a little bit emotional because it... It means a lot to us, you know, we want to look after our own and they were at a funeral yesterday, um, Mr Captain's run, we, I met with them on Wednesday afternoon to go through what the game is all about, but we're human beings, this goes beyond the boundary line and they're two of our 
most important players and young men we want to look at, put our arms around. So, um, yeah, to all the Dacos family, we, it's with sadness we uh, we send our best wishes. That, that's what footy clubs are about, isn't it? That sort of coming together and and the sort of kindred spirit that that's a, I know it's a huge part of your coaching philosophy. Well, family first. That's our that's our approach to it. So. Yeah, when you unfortunately lose someone in your family, that's the worst kind, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think I've said what I want to say around that. Tom Mitchell, pretty impressive on debut. A few, a few guys, like 11 clearances, a couple of goals. Mm. Probably couldn't have asked for much more. Well, we, we get him in for a reason. Um, yeah, his first possession is as good as anyone in the competition, and, and we were lacking in that area. And we need somebody to get in there and win clearances for us. It was a part of our game last year we needed to really get on top of. and. His first possession to Geordie and you know, Nick Dacos, these players, he's going to make a lot of players better around him, yeah. What did you make of the theatre around Ollie Henry tonight? It was The crowd seemed to get pretty involved in it, and Darcy Moore had that really good chase down tackle. What did you think of it all? Yeah, well, hopefully I didn't want Ollie to go, um, but he's no longer a Collingwood player, so um, he's part of the opposition, and we went to work on trying to take advantage of that. Just uh, to go in Pen Penelbury, we're, we're really good at again tonight. I mean, Dugo, he seems to have been building in the pre-season and I guess he's sort of franked that formula way out tonight. Yeah. I don't know what you want me to say. Every week I get asked about Geordie, but he's 11 <laughs> score involvements and just doing his job. And he's another one that's smiling around the place. So, um, yeah, we're, we're under no illusion that it's round one. We've a long way to go. There's no patterns of behaviours yet, as I said, around anything. Um, but it's nice to beat the running premiers. Um, that's a good start. What about the you know, quick contribution of uh, McInnes and McCreary in the last quarter? You know, big, big stakes, and those two guys have really put their hands up. Haven't they? Yeah, well, they're young, developing players. That you know, have only played a handful of games. I think Reef has, and he's had a terrific preseason. We wanted to reward him a bit more than just the, the sub. His, his work rate and impact at training has been fantastic. So credit to him. And Bo's had 20 possessions. That's a world record for him. Um, we don't normally pick him to have lots of touches. His pressure is what we love. Um, he got on the end of the scoreboard too. That's a reflection of how we move the ball though. We got those players into the game. So um, pleasing start for those two guys. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks, guys.